So right now, I think the most important part of defining our strategy is kind of starting a, a baseline for some of the priorities that we want to reach for throughout this 30 hour build. So for that, we're kind of going to start by addressing the scoring, first of all, since to win a match, which is going to be the goal of every match, you want to score the most points, obviously. So for that, you kind of want to look for the, the big ticket items that are going to score you the most points overall in the match. And then you can further break that down into whether it's an item that will take a short amount of time for high scores or maybe just over time what you're going to be doing for the bulk of the match. Giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now is supported by Kettering University. On average, Kettering students earn $45 to $70,000 over the course of their co-op program to help them graduate debt-free. 99% of students qualify for a merit scholarship and you can apply for one of the 80 plus first scholarships worth up to $25,000 each. If you are a U.S. student grades 8 through 12, scan the QR code to stay up to date on info and events happening at Kettering and get a free Kettering t-shirt when you sign up by December 12, 2021. Starting out, we have our game elements, the freight. That's going to be a big one. But before we get to actually moving around the freight, before we get to capping, going around on the, spinning the carousel, one of the most important things is pretty simple. We're going to want to drive for any sort of scoring in the match. So we'll just make that our zero priority because it is the first priority, but it's kind of a given and zero is a, a cool programming CS method to do that. So priority zero, we're going to have actually have our robot drive and be mobile around the field. So aside from that, then we're going to kind of look at the shipping out or sorry, we're going to look at the freight and how that's going to give a score. So for the bulk of the match, just from a time point of view, we are going to be in regular gameplay outside of Auton and outside of Endgame. So if we look at that category, we're kind of going to be mainly focusing on just scoring this freight on the either Alliance or shared shipping hub. So we are going to want to manipulate that freight in some sort of way. So at a base, we probably are going to go back over this and maybe define some more specifics later on. But we'll say for now, one, we want to be able to manipulate the freight. Write that as nice as I can. Any addition on that, Cole? So I think we've already got our drive and we've got our manipulate freight. And now that does, while being pretty broad, that covers a majority of the scoring, is driving and being able to manipulate that freight. I think the next thing that we should have as our priority two is having the having an auton ability. Because you know there's a lot of great opportunities to have an auton. So that's sort of a subgroup of these first but I think next priority is just the any sort of auton whatsoever. Because even if you're just able to move a little bit and get some of those parking points, that's still points you won't get elsewhere in the match. So I think we can say our priority two is autonomous capability. Sure, I think that sort of does fall into the driving and manipulating. But I mean, one of the big parts of auton is delivering the duck from the carousel, right? That'll get you 10 points pretty easily. So do we want to say maybe that we want to be able to manipulate the carousel? Yeah, a carousel manipulation, a spinning that. That's going to come up in the Auton period, and that's going to come up during normal gameplay. So I think, uh, still thinking about the ducks, we might want to sort of look at for other big ticket scoring opportunities in our autonomous period, the ability to detect the position of that duck can give you 20 points if you detect the position of the duck and place the whatever element on the corresponding spot of your shipping hub. So maybe not our number three priority, but definitely should be high, is the mm. ability to, in the autonomous period, detect the location of that duck. So Luke, do we want to table that for now, or do we want to put him up right I'd say I'd say that's, uh, that's a decent amount of programming. That is a high-level skill right? to have. So I think we... Uh, We'll put that. We'll put that on at some point. But I think we can. Uh, 
we'll say that's our, our programming team's job right there. <laughs> so at the, at the end of the day, we want to make sure that we have all the mechanical abilities first because what you have in mechanical or what you have in programming isn't going to have much of an effect if you don't have the mechanics to actually figure it out, right? So moving on to our third priority, kind of the only other game objective here I see is capping using our shipping element and putting that on top of the Alliance shipping hub. So it seems like once you manipulate the freight, which we'll be doing for most of the match, and then controlling the carousel there, we want to be some, able to do something with the shipping element. And since that is a little bit more difficult of a task, you do have to obviously reach pretty high on the, the shipping hub to score that shipping element it's going to be a little bit more difficult and because of that we might want to spend a little bit less time on it since oh, it is a decent number of points down here with the 15 for doing the capping it is going to be a little bit more difficult to get the control of it and then put it up somewhere higher right there so uh, might need a different mechanism for that so because of that I think we'll put that as our third mm -hmm. and so precision precision really is key to doing that task as we discussed a little earlier you do incur penalties if you accidentally move your own shipping hub while doing that so you really want to focus on the precision when you're capping that shipping hub you don't want to accidentally move your own thing you just want to contact your game piece and not contact the shipping hub mm -hmm. exactly I think they, they might be a little bit more lenient on uh, on some of the the minor, but we do want to make sure at the end of the day that you are not making huge contact with that because that, I mean, you could definitely, with enough force, you might even descore some of your own freight on the shipping hub there. So, definitely something to look out for. So, yeah, those are currently our big three priorities in order of at least the, the game objectives here. We obviously have a lot of different subtasks in this. So manipulating freight is a, uh, a pretty large category since you can score the freight on the low level, on the mid level, the high level. Those different levels there will get you different points. So those are going to play into our strategy as well. But at the end of the day, we do want to find a solution to manipulating the freight at first. After that, in terms of game objectives, we want to control the carousel since we feel that that is an easier task for what it's worth. It may be just be a simple motor and a wheel that you drive up to and do that. And then beyond that, it's a lot of just control and practice with the driving. But that'll get us a decent amount of points in the Auton period and the end game period. And then lastly, we want to focus on capping the shipping hub with our shipping element since that may include making a more complex mechanism. So if this is going to take a decent amount of time, we want to make sure that we can at least secure these two at first since those will get us a decent amount of points. And they are kind of crucial to, yes, those large scores and helping you win the matches at the end of the day. Whereas the shipping hub is kind of more finite with the 15 points there for just the single task. So we will focus on them in this order pretty much. So these are our main priorities, I guess, in terms of game objectives here. But like I said, we have a lot of decisions to make on how we're going to approach the game in itself because you can score on different levels. You can have different strategies with the, the carousels. It's pretty, pretty standard and it's autonomous and end game and so is the capping. But we are going to have to figure out how we're going to address going to different levels, whether that be different forms of mechanisms or different strategies. We definitely feel like some of the previous year's games have somewhat of an effect on this. So uh, when it comes to the method of scoring, you can be, you can reach over, like in Rover, Rover Rockets a couple years ago, you can reach over and that might, uh, that might increase your cycles in the amount of time that you have, which will score you more points. So we're really going to focus on a couple different methods of, of prototyping to make sure that we try to get everything that we can and end up with the most effective strategy overall and not just the most effective mechanisms. Yeah, I think that covers our priorities for this. And another big thing that's always important for us is with the 30-hour time constraint,
your priorities. You don't want to just look at what scoring opportunities you have, but you really want to take into account your own capability. We have a huge time limit with 30 hours, but any team should look at what systems do you feel comfortable making and what is a reach goal. You should always have your reach goals for some of those high point opportunities, but always take into account your own capabilities and what you know you're going to be able to do well. Thanks to Kettering University for their support of this video. Don't just sit in class. Kettering University is the only school in the U.S. that allows you to work as an engineer your first year with their three-month on, three-month off co-op programs. If you are a U.S. student grades 8 through 12, scan the QR code to stay up to date on info and events happening at Kettering and get a free Kettering t-shirt when you sign up by December 12, 2021. Thank you to Animark, GoBuilda, and Rev Robotics for providing components and giveaways to the Bulldogs Robot in 30 Hours team. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.